Hmm. Um, tough question. I would. I have continued to be associated with aspects of the CGIAR, um, and I think probably two challenges. And I won't say this for Erie. It's simply, but I suspect it applies to Erie as well as to other international institutes that I've uh, visited. Is that the CGIAR has become terribly bureaucratized. I think the superstructure above the scientist level has only grown, not at the stations so much, although that probably might have happened to some extent, but really off station. In the superstructure that governs the CGIAR, I believe it has become extraordinarily cumbersome. It's not infused with scientists who served on the ground as we did but by others who come in to administer the, the system uh, from the standpoint of, um, of um, accountability, good rules of, uh, of operation, uh, business practices, uh, uh, governance is a big issue for us, and that's only resulted in more and more meetings and more and more people, and very often the people uh, in those levels, while good as they are, did not evolve from, the, did not come through the system from the scientist level, and I believe that's one of the biggest challenges. At the same time, I don't think the CGIAR has been able to develop uh, a true constituency that goes to bat for it in the where where funds come from. I can remember when I first, uh, in 1994, I joined uh, Texas A&M University. I went to a meeting that was comprised of U.S. universities and the CGIAR representatives. And I remember at that meeting I gave sort of an impassioned talk about how we as scientists need to understand where the money came from and how we need to create a consciousness among this broader constituency of taxpayers in the U.S. and Europe and Asia who are paying for the system. And I can remember one particular DG talking to me and said, Ed, we don't worry about the taxpayers. We don't worry about where the money comes from. We worry only about how best to spend that money for good research. The money comes if you do good research. But I think in recent years we've learned that that, that, that uh, philosophy does not persist, that, uh, that we do now have to be worried about a constituency. Now, I, I, I think we're all we're full of challenges. I'm not sure the CGIAR can meet all the challenges. I'm not sure that universities can meet all the challenges. I feel still um, uh, very passionate about what I feel has to be accomplished in the future. Um, I believe that the world has become more fractured, and I'm not talking simply about in politically. I believe that uh, that organizationally we become fractured and it's much harder to accomplish uh, goals that uh, as a community that we that used to be accomplished and to say it more simply um, I'm trying today to work with um, powers that be on the role that agricultural technology plays in conflict we most everywhere that I work today in international agriculture for a university has either is either just emerging from a period of conflict and the poverty that persists in those countries is related to conflict I would say that would include El Salvador Guatemala Bangladesh many parts of the world for which uh, conflict is, is a recent experience our conflict uh, hard, so, sorry to say is imminent uh, or that conflict is un is currently underway, or, or or we will soon be trying to reconstruct after conflict. I don't believe we understand very well the role of agricultural technology in conflict. When there's conflict, we uh, it's often relegated to the um, political scientists, the diplomats, anthropologists who look at religion and look at other facets of uh, of ethnic group of, of ethnicity and look there for the sources of conflict and the, and the ways to resolve conflict. 
I believe that agricultural technology is one of the more powerful tools that we have for preventing conflict, for supporting families and communities to survive conflict, and to rebuild uh, communities and uh, economic systems following conflict. I believe, but unfortunately, I don't think we understand well enough the, di the different ways that agriculture, agricultural technology can play those roles and sometimes, in fact, bring about the conflict in the first place or exacerbate conflict. So that's, uh, that's one of the areas where I'd like to see more and more emphasis uh, uh, invested for the future.